G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial, this time looking at lists. And I'm going to primarily show you what a list is and how to use one. Now, the last two videos I created about arrays are really going to be quintessential knowledge for this one because most of what makes an array also makes a list with one major difference. So I suggest if you skipped over the videos or you just happened upon this one and you don't know about arrays in detail, go back to the previous two videos which are linked in the description, have a look at them and get to know arrays before you start watching this one. But what essentially is an array? I want to actually start that description by comparing it to an array. So what makes an array? Well an array is essentially a set of variables of the same data type. Okay, and then what is a list? So a list is, whoop, I can't get my tabbing right today, a set of variables of the same data type. So you can see already we've got a massive similarity. So their functionality and their purpose is exactly the same. The biggest difference with an array, we have a fixed size. With a list, we have a dynamic size. Now, if you're watching this video and you have some knowledge of arrays, you may know that you can actually have dynamic arrays. They're not the best. Efficiency-wise, dynamic arrays are horrible and you don't want to ever use them if you can help it. Lists are much, much, much better for this particular purpose. So you can see in the previous videos, if I wanted five strings, then I created five strings. If I wanted 10 numbers, I created just 10 integers. And that way, we have a fixed size and the computer knows how much RAM to allocate to it. A list is a dynamic array that allows you to store basically the same stuff, okay, without knowing the limit of how many elements are going to be in size of it, inside, sorry, of it. So that might mean that you've got values coming in from the user, or you might have values coming from the internet, or you might have values coming from a file, and you're just not quite sure how many elements that you're going to require. So before I keep going on about this stuff, let's actually get an example up there. So to create a list, you use the word list, simple as that. And then you use these diamond brackets after it to specify what data type is going to be stored. T there stands for the data type. So for example, if I want a list of numbers, then I'm just going to type int. And after that, the name of my list, just like the previous ones. Okay, And this is how you create a list. Now the biggest problem, you can see, not that warning, if I utilize nums right now, okay, such as, um, it's like an array. So if I just go nums0 like this, Okay, it says down the bottom use of unassigned local variable and what that actually means is that when I make a list by default it's given absolutely no memory. So what we have to do is tell C sharp I want to allocate some RAM and start using this bad boy and the way to do that is to put equals new list in brackets or diamonds int and then empty brackets on the end and that creates you a brand new list that you can start utilizing. So you can see it looks very similar to how we first created our arrays. Okay, with the arrays we were allocating the memory and right now we're allocating memory for a list of integers. It's just empty at the moment. So that's pretty much it. And you use it the exact same way as an array, but the way you add numbers is slightly different because with an array we had predefined slots that they went into. With a list, we don't have any slots. So the way to add things to a list is to type the name, type add, and in brackets, put the item you're adding to your list. So if you want to add three things, you simply keep using the add function. Okay, and the way it works is the first item that's added in is the zero index, and then you get the second one, which is the one index, and then you'll get the two index for the next item, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so if I want to then print this to the screen, I use the exact same functionality that I used in the previous videos. So I could use a for loop or a for each loop, or you could use any loop really. I'm just going to use a normal for loop to start with, and then we'll branch out and do other things. So my starting index is zero, my ending index is two, so I'm just going to go less than three. And then I want to increase by one. All right, so then we can just do console write line um, nums, and in square braces, just like we did with the arrays, count and print those to the screen. Okay, whoop, scrolled too much. I'll put a read key on the bottom so I can run my program. And you'll see that should hopefully bring up those three numbers in that order because I'm starting at zero and going down to two. All right. So I could use a for each loop. It actually would do the exact same thing, which is really good. Now, sometimes you have absolutely no idea 
how many elements are in your list and that's pretty much the whole purpose of a list really isn't it because I'll just type that a list is dynamic so if it comes from a text file how do you know how many elements are in there so I would have to keep changing this and then how would I guess how many things are in my file well you don't have to guess that's the great thing about lists okay you go from zero to nums dot count okay so since I have four elements inside my list count is going to give me the value of four if I have five elements in my list counts gonna give me five and so forth so if I run that now it's gonna print out every single item in my list no matter how small or big that list becomes okay if you like this code and you want to give it a go pause the video because right now I'm gonna delete my little ads and I'm gonna let the user choose how many elements they want inside my list so I'm going to use a bit of a while loop, but I'm going to need a quick integer at the top here. Call it user num. Um, and what I might do actually is create a while loop while the user num does not equal minus one. I'm going to let them add numbers to my list. So console write because it's always nice to have a message. Enter a number minus one to stop, like so. And then I'll do user num equals int dot pass console dot read line so what I'm doing here is looping until the user types in minus one grabbing that user number and one last step I forgot is going nums dot add user num whoops all right and then print all those numbers to the screen so if I run this enter a number so I can enter any types of numbers until I hit minus one and then it prints out every single number that I've added into my list. So that's a pretty quick way of doing and using a list. So what we've got here is adding the values to the list. We've got accessing the values from a list. How do you go about removing items from a list? Well, you might have noticed that we've got one little problem. At the bottom, if I type in minus one, I get given the value minus one. Well, a lot of cases you wouldn't want to do that. Now I could fix that with a quick if statement, but I want to show you how to remove elements. So that's how I'm going to use this example. So for example, if I add in four numbers, then the minus one will be in index number three. So quick example, nums.remove at, and then the index. So if I enter four numbers, it is going to remove the, th the number in the index three. I'm getting tangled on my words here. So one, two, three, minus one. And you can see it's removed that last element and it's only shown me the top three. Now, of course, if I don't enter in three numbers, I'm going to get a runtime error because it says index was out of range, the exact same error we had with our array. But if I quickly add in more than four numbers, like so, you can actually see it's removed the six out of that list, okay? And that's the basics of using a list, guys, is creating a dynamic array, adding elements, accessing them, and then deleting them. And as I said before, you could use a for each. So I'll quickly show you a for each loop using the list, which is gonna be the exact same as the last video. But then we're gonna move on to the next video after this. So if I go int number in nums, console write line number. Okay, so this loop here, is the exact same functionality as this loop here. The only difference is I've got the index that I'm up to and this one we're just grabbing each number as it comes along. I have had to use this loop a couple of times, especially when I have to remove a certain element at a certain time. And I've used this primarily most of the time when I go through my lists. But anyway, guys, that's the video. I told you to be quick. Thanks very much for watching. I'd like you to think about liking, subscribing, or commenting. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk about functions. And we're very, very close to getting into Windows applications, guys. So again, thanks for watching. See you then.